had found many ancient Netherese magic items and spell books and mastered them to become a quiet, little known powerhouse of magic. Hail and well met and welcome back to another Realms Lore video. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sarah Ed Greenwood, and today we are taking a look at the mortal gunslinger mage of Mistra. Ed, would you like to explain that a little for us? Sure, yeah. There's always a magister mm. in the realms. Or is there? And that's what this video is going to be about. But hey, it, to be magister, you have to defeat the previous magister in a spell duel, which is usually a fatal thing. We're going to explore that, the magisters, right now. If you are enjoying these Realms Lore videos, please be sure to check out our Patreon, that's patreon.com slash edgreenwood, and your support by becoming a protector of the realms there is what allows us to continue making these videos here for you. So, uh, in the meantime, please enjoy this video on the Magister. The Magister Today. A look at the mortal gunslinger Mage of Mistra. The Office of Magister, first among wizards, is claimed by challenging and spell-defeating the current Magister. There have been a rare few Magisters who peacefully surrendered to a challenger, handing over the office without strife. Even more rarely, the office may become vacant because a Magister perishes by misadventure, commits suicide, renounces the office by feeble-minding themselves, or resigns, usually to accept death or to enter his mistress' service as a weave ghost leaving their body behind. When there is no Magister, a likely successor may be approached by a manifestation of Mistra or Zuth or a Weave Ghost Servitor of Mistra and asked to take the post. If they accept, they gain the insights and abilities of the office instantly, described by some mages as the ultimate rapture. A belief has arisen and spread across Faroon that there is now no Magister, the office ending with the Spell Plague, but this is mistaken. Elminster has now shared with me a brief overview of Magisters over the last century, as follows. Talatha Verovri, nicknamed the Shadow Sorceress of Innerlith, but now better, though erroneously known as the last Magister. Talatha was Magister from 1370 to 1385 DR. She had an extremely rare ability that made her an ideal Magister. She could concentrate on multiple magics at once. A kindly woman, she was one of the few Magisters to work closely with Azuth on missions to make magic more easily available to all in daily useful fashion. She was slain by one of the multiple Manshuns of the time, just before the onset of the Spell Plague, Helicort Darimon. This Magister was a Chesentan Spell Slayer for hire, accomplished in using her magic to assassinate. <laughs> she accepted the post from a manifestation of Azuth. El believes the god knew her likely fate and offered the Magistership to eliminate someone using her art in such a manner. Helicord went insane when the weave went wild at Mistra's death. The demise of the goddess caused the onset of the spell plague in a great wave of magical chaos, and in the wild heart of it, Helicord's head literally exploded. Many sages since have confused her demise with that of her predecessor, Talath. She was Magister for less than a 10 day in 3085 DR. The time of no Magisters and many. As the spell plague raged, the weave rippled wildly and magic went wild. Spell duels became literal suicides for all involved, so there was no Magister for almost 60 years. Thereafter, as the weave ripples quieted, and some dared to cast spells again, a flurry of ambitious young spellcasters challenged for the office and either proclaimed themselves magister but gained no powers of office for Azuth granted none and there was no Mistra, 
only to be challenged and destroyed within hours by the next ambitious claimant, or failing and dying in their initial challenge duel. Tanastra of Hardcastle. This female half-elf was formerly Tanathra Erdri, but never used her surname after fleeing her abusive father. She survived the ravages of the fading spell plague by accident when a wild magic surge grafted three magic items, a blast scepter, a crown of stars, and a belt of power, uh, that is, a staff of power, but in belt form, uh, an item crafted by the symbol, into her body. Their powers protected her, and once she'd learned to control them, manifested out of her at her will. This allowed her to prevail in a battle between six would-be magisters in 1442 DR after Azuth had offered the magistership to one of them. But others demanded it on the spot. Azuth withdrew to let the mortals decide in her traditional duel, which raged in an inn that Tanathra happened to be staying at. And she got involved when she furiously and successfully tried to defend the establishment of Harrian's Hall in El Boulder and herself from all the deadly magic from being hurled about. So Tanathra was magister when Mistra returned in 1479 DR, but thanks to the magic items forcibly installed in her body, was also misshapen, racked with pain, and went about cloaked and cowled to conceal her identity from would-be challengers. The enchantments on the items within her made her constantly regenerate, so she proved difficult to kill. Not that many tried. For a time, in the wake of the spell plague, very few wizards stalked the world seeking to take down or replace the Magister. Most had their hands full rebuilding a cause, area, or patron's domain they wanted strengthened or developing their own art so as to be better able to survive future challenges. When they first met face to face in 1490 DR, Tanathra pleaded with Mistra to be allowed to retire. The Mistra granted her desire and quelled her pain. Tanathra had become used to the magic within her and opted to retain it, so she survives as a seldom seen wandering servitor of Mistra to this day. She walks alone taking no bold part in politics, but woe betide the Lich, Beholder, Red Wizard, Illithid, Cult of the Dragon, or Zentra member who crosses her path and offers her violence. She battles them, trusting in her regeneration and a spell Azuth gave her that protects her with spell reflection, that is, magical effects, even area effects spells, sent her way get hurled back with full effect at the caster or source to eventually prevail, even against far mightier foes. Valar Grim Hond. With Tanathra's retirement, the office of Magister again stood vacant, and Mistra and Azuth conferred together and then offered the Magistership to Valar Grim Hond, a hardened mercenary mage who'd had a lot of experience in fighting up and down the Vilhon Reach and in Chacenta a sardonic, spike-bearded man bristling with enchanted rings, wands, and a trio of flying daggers of his own devising that obeyed his will and that he could cast spells through. Valargrim defended his office by winning several duels, retaining the magistership until 1496 DR, when he perished in a spectacular spell duel with six red wizards sent to eliminate him by Zas Tam that destroyed the Eyes of the Beholder Club in Orm Patar. Only one Red Wizard survived that fray, and he was murdered on the spot by Handrar Resgalt, an opportunistic Zentarim wizard who was staying nearby in the city. Resgalt never attained the powers of the office, as Valargrim's three flying daggers, revealed by this deed to harbor sentences of their own, bound into them by their maker, assassinated Resgult even as he gloated over the Red Wizard he just blasted apart. 
They then fled, flying into the night, and Olinster says, They're still out there somewhere, still flying, still slaying. Once more, the magistership stood vacant. This time, Azuth, with Mistress Blessing, offered the office to a wizard of Altumbel, Remarthont Horaris, who over three decades as an adventure had found many ancient Netherese magic items and spellbooks and mastered them to become a quiet, little known powerhouse of magic. Horaris accepted and was promptly attacked by 16 liches sent by Zas Tam to try to seize all the magic they could from him. He destroyed them and reboot Tam by working a spell that magically plucked several beholders who'd long worked with Manshun to guide the Zentrim from their hidden cavern layers and tossed them into Tam's lap in Thaymount, where they wreaked much havoc among the liches and senior Thayan courtiers you're managing to flee or being destroyed. Tam has lifted no hand against Torreres since. For his part, Ramarthand Horares remains a quiet, thoughtful man, retired from adventuring and relocated from Altumbel to several layers throughout Faroon. Horares dedicates himself to developing new spells and magic items and modifying existing ones to defend himself ever more effectively with magic's few can match. He hasn't faced any challengers in recent years, partly because no one can readily find him. He recently destroyed an ambitious young arcanist who survived the fall of Thultansar by being elsewhere on a mission, who sought to seize the magic of Ramarthan Horeres and at one stroke become mighty in magic. Elminster warns that anyone thinking to unseat Horeres from office had best already be mighty in magic indeed. And that's the Magister, up till right now.